Hi, this lecture is about data ops. The acknowledgement is MS Learn because a huge inspiration is from MS Learn, the material is from there. So, overview data ops is a life cycle approach to data analytics. It uses agile practices to orchestrate tools, code, and infrastructure to quickly deliver high quality data with improved security. When we implement and streamline data ops processes, our business can easily deliver cost effective analytical insights. Data ops helps us to adopt advanced data techniques that can uncover insights and new opportunities. So, what are the pillars of data ops? It is data governance and people, development, testing and release and monitoring. So, what are the data governance pillars? It is data governance itself. We have to define clear roles, there is data tools, there is data movement and then there is security. What is data governance? Obviously, this is a very wide topic, but we will try to summarize in a few words. A central location is used to register data sources. Data lineage and metadata are available. Data is easily discoverable by users and sensitive data is secured. Data and security officers have sidelines into how data is being used, who has access, and where sensitive data might be located. So, this is in the view of the data ops, the data governance pillar. Define clear roles for data ops, engineers, testers, data scientists, operations, data analysts, business users, and Data officers all work together and understand their roles in the project. Stakeholders are identified and you understand what's motivating stakeholders to start making data-driven decisions. So that is very important that we have to understand what is motivating the stakeholders to start these data-driven decisions. Data movement. Use cases for streaming, interactive and batch analytics are resolved. The various types of data for each case are clarified and metrics are defined to motivate making data-driven decisions. Data tools needed to make data easier to access, share, analyze and secure are identified or developed. All resources, data in transit and data at rest have been audited and made company security standards. So these are some of the checklists that we would be performing when we are seeing the data ops is in prevalent in the organization. The next pillar that we would be looking from data ops is the development part. So the development pillar has all these sub pillars. It has got a pipeline design pattern, centralized ingestion, centralized computation, data abstraction and source control. What is the pipeline design pattern that we would be looking for in data ops? That is data pipelines are designed for use and use parameterization. Pipelines solve common ETL problems. It is not specific. It is some common ETL problems they are solving. Centralized ingestion and centralized computation. A centralized platform hosts pipelines for all external and internal data sources. This allows for simplified management, monitoring, security and standardization of data movement. Costs associated with handling data are also centralized. Central control can help minimize cost and maximize efficiency. A central team defines metrics and determines how to compute these metrics. This allows for consistency across the organization and limits confusion to where to make updates to computations. It also creates one source for metrics definition, governance, testing and quality controls. Data abstraction and source control. Reporting uses a data abstraction layer. 
This allows the use of consistent business terminology, a simplified view of data, and a minimal effect on data consumers when new versions of data are available. Data-related infrastructure, database schemas, procedures, ETL processes, and reports are treated as code and managed in a repository. All changes are deployed and tested via development, testing, acceptance, and production stack, that is the DTAP stack. Testing, this is another pillar, and it has got several other pillars. What it is, the DTAP environments, testing, and build and deploy process. So DTAP environments, non-production environments that mimic the production are available. Builds and deployments are run and tested on the non-production before a production push. Deliver, developers can deliver reproducible results in all environments. Testing, unit end-to-end -end and regression tests run at a specified frequency and interval. All tests are in source control and run as a part of a build and deploy process. Post-deployment end-user input is welcome and incorporated into testing as appropriate. Obviously, these are very good checklist and this is what we should aspire for. But this gives a guidance that what we should aspire for in data ops. A gated process deploys changes to production environment. Changes are tested in development and test environments. Changes are certified before they go to production. This process is as automated as possible. Monitoring pillars. So these are the several other sub-pillars in monitoring, alerting and remediation efficiency and build and deploy process. Alerting and remediation operations is alerted to any errors. You can respond to feedback quickly and have a process for quickly addressing issues as they arise. Pipelines are observable. Data movement is efficient. Infrastructure can be scaled to meet volume and velocity needs. Data is reusable where, whenever possible. The statistical process control is used to monitor and control the data pipelines. And you can use the outputs of pipelines to determine the next step in the data flow. So what are the tools? Now we go into specific. Till now we have been maintaining a generic structure of how this has to be done. But the tools which we can use in Azure are Microsoft Purview for data governance. Azure Data Factory is a data orchestration tool and it has some data ingestion and ELT capabilities. Azure Databricks is a great tool used for transformations, data ingestion, and you can use it in conjunction with Azure Data Factory. Azure DevOps with the repositories and it can do the DevOps part of the data ops and Azure monitor for monitoring and observability. Hope you liked the lecture on data ops and its correlation with Azure. Thank you.